shout of worship. We praise you tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you love the name? Does your life look totally different because of the name? Amen. Not because of your name. Not because of your parents' name. Not because of some relative who's the president, who's the governor. One name above all names. Amen. Go ahead and be seated tonight. Welcome everyone who's joined us by live stream. We're glad you have joined us. We're glad everybody here has come to be with us on a Thursday night for our very first Jesus the Healer Miracle Crusade of this year. Uh, we ask everybody in here to silence your phones and electronic devices and uh, be with us tomorrow for our last day. If you can, if you're watching in the area, uh, maybe somehow we have popped up on your YouTube or your Facebook. We would love to have you here tonight or tomorrow at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. We're right here in Fresno uh, in the Central Valley. If you're anywhere in the valley, it's an easy drive. It's easy to be here and get your miracle, get your answer, be in the anointing, the presence of God, the power of God. So one day we, we don't want to... Don't want to end uh, going, well, it's just the last day. My goodness, we're going out big tomorrow. Ministry to the sick tomorrow night. Double up offering night. So be here. If you have uh, a testimony as well, we also uh, want to go ahead and hear about those. Don't wait till the end of the week. We want to hear about them right now. Uh, I believe that we also, I want to read this to you to, just to stir your faith. If I could, um, our staff handed me this testimony that was emailed to our offices it says, I went to the meeting in Fresno both Monday and Tuesday evening. At the end of the service Tuesday, Nancy asked for people to come forward who needed prayer for healing. I came to the meeting with my walker and oxygen. I had Addison's disease, which can be fatal. Since October, I've been hospitalized seven times, two being in ICU, almost dying. I just got out of the hospital before traveling to the meeting. I did not know if I was going to be able to go. When Nancy prayed for me, I instantly felt God. But after a few words, she just said, Jesus. I instantly went down. It felt like there were angels singing all around me. I felt total peace. I knew I was healed. After that, I did not need my walker anymore. I traveled home the next day and ran for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> said, I could not do that before, and I hadn't ran since before last October when I got sick and was diagnosed with the Addison's disease. I feel like God saved me. I have my life back. God is amazing. I never heard of Nancy until a week before the meeting. My mom saw her program on TV in the middle of the night and heard about the prayer meetings and said, we're going to go. We're going so you can get healed. No one wanted me to go and be away from the hospital, but I knew God would keep me safe. I didn't think I was going to have the chance to be prayed for because it was only Tuesday, but I prayed that Nancy would pray for the people. Now I'm healed. Um, that's just one. So get your testimonies in. Amen. Um, and then just since we're on a roll with testimonies, Faith TV Africa, this is from South Africa. Pastor Nancy, your ministry has been a blessing to me. This is my second testimony since I started listening to you on the 1st of March, 2024. I was listening to your broadcast on Faith TV from South Africa, and you said that we should take back what the devil has taken from us, and that no matter how long he has taken it from us, we can still get it back. My husband said that we should meditate on what you said, and I did that day. Nine years later, I found my father who had never been seen or met in 28 years of searching. I finally found him. I thank the Lord once again for blessing me through your ministry. Keep up the good work, Pastor Nancy. You are a blessing to our generation. Um, 
this one was from Canada. The Miracle Crusade. Uh, no, Holy Ghost meetings. Somebody from Canada came. Dear Pastor Nancy, I attended the Holy Ghost meetings in January. When I came back to Canada, my friend pointed out to me that I wasn't wiping my eye anymore. You see, I had a blocked tear duct for over a year. My right eye would water nonstop. It hasn't watered since I came back. This is a miracle to me. These are the kinds of testimonies. I, I want us to, to make a connection here. Faith TV Africa, our Holy Ghost meetings, and these meetings are all um, put on by Dufresne Ministries. Um, Dufresne Ministries, yes, receives, if pa when Pastor Nancy travels, she will receive an offering that goes into Dufresne Ministries. Uh, but you understand, we don't have like a church does where there's weekly income necessarily from a service. There's many weeks out of the year that she has to be home filming TV. She has to be in that studio four days a week filming five, uh, five messages a day, five episodes a day. She cannot be out on the road the way she used to. And so Dufresne Ministries is funded through the partnership those of you watching, we actually have the capability to stream this meeting because of partnership. It cost, it was a much, much bigger expense that we stepped out in faith and took on to have this meeting here in Central California uh, because everything here we had to rent, we had to haul here, we had to do something that required a financial obligation. And partnership is so significant in getting the word on Faith TV Africa. That is not one that we're on free of charge. That is a huge cost. Um, and then any conferences we have are sponsored by Dufresne Ministries. All the road meetings, uh, all of any production with her books, anything that she says we need to do something uh, new, the Holy Ghost said to do, all of that coming from Dufresne Ministries is going to be best taken care of through partnership. And so we have what's called Legacy Partner Club, Legacy part Partnership. You can see here uh, when you become a partner with our ministry, it's these testimonies that are going to your account in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking, I'm yeah. taking that. My partner, my monthly, my my husband's partnership money has helped. And not only that, we we I mean, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying we go over above and put money in a partnership to the TV department because there is people on the other side of that camera when she sits down week after week and cannot get out on the road because the television ministry needs what uh, she is bringing and the message that she's bringing. Uh, it is so vital to the message going around the world that partnership is just critical seed for the kingdom of God. Vital seed. Um, I would ask if you're in here, if you're watching and you've been blessed by these meetings, if these testimonies blessed you, if something on the inside jumped for joy, if it even if it just moved your emotions, you don't want to give out of emotions, but my goodness, if that didn't touch your life, then what are you believing for? Because we're believing for miracles. But it, miracles take money. We're not buying them from God, but we're getting the miracle message out. So if you're in here and you say, I've got to partner with this. I want to partner with this. We would love to have, we pray for our partners, our staff every day. I, I get up, Pastor Nancy, I know every day we get up, we pray uh, the Pauline prayers over our, our partners, their increase, their blessing, uh, that they have revelation. We're honored when people choose to sow into Dufresne Ministries. And we don't take that lightly. We also have regular communication, a monthly partner newsletter with a teaching from Pastor Nancy that only goes to our partners. We're going to do consistent ministry updates and communication from DM. Uh, we do prayers of agreement with our partners. When they write in, when they send things in, we take those specifically, our partners' prayers, and lift those up uh, before 
for God, even separately. A legacy partner card that gives you a 20% discount on most DM products is also available to you. So if you're in here and you're just interested, I'm not saying you're going to sign up. We're not putting pressure, but I am certainly exhorting you uh, because I'm a partner. I believe in partnership. Our ministry is also partners with many other ministries. So it doesn't just stop here with us. Dufresne Ministries, our church, we partner with other ministries because we believe in what they're doing. So if there's somebody in you say, I want to be a part of this. I want to send this message further. I want to be part of the next Miracle Crusade. I want to be part of the, the broadcast that's showing next week and next month and the next six months. If that's you, raise your hand. We've just got some information. I know many of you in here uh, are probably already partners right here, right here. Anyone else right up here? Um, we, again, we we don't require like a, a, a an amount Whatever the Holy Ghost asks of you, that's it. Whatever you have on your heart, uh, whatever is generous, that you can be generous with, we are so blessed to receive it, uh, to pray over it, to agree with you. So again, thank you to those of you who are partners. How many of you in here are partners? Raise your hand. Look at our partners. Yeah. Amen. I tell you what, the, the best is yet to come, partners. Oh, can I announce that? Okay. There's more. But wait. But wait. There's more. It gets better. Pastor said I can announce uh, that we are going on another network. R Rick, at their invitation, every network has come at their invitation. We have never pursued this ministry. Pastor Nancy has never pursued going on somebody's channel or network. But uh, Rick and Denise Renner have been over in Russia and in the, the um, well, it was still, they went over there when the Iron Curtain was still up. And they have been over in that region, uh, I believe since the late 80s. They have a TV network. Now we're on TV in Russia, but they have a TV network that reaches an entirely different group of people demographic. They have invited Pastor Nancy to be free of charge on their network. Now, like I said, when we say, hey, they're inviting her free of charge, it still costs finances, yes. staffing, and that is time when she's not out on the road. Yes. But this network is an estimated reach of 20 million homes covering all of Europe. Western Russia, the Middle East, Central Asia, and Ukraine via satellite. Yes. So, and they've had this. It's well established. So now you can see here. Oh, where'd it go? Praise the Lord. 600 million household potential reach. Um, with with the, Af the network in Africa, this network, we're doubling. We're getting on now multiple networks in the Europe, European region, also multiple networks within the Middle Eastern. So God is starting to layer that if the Holy Ghost can't can't reach him with one network, he he's just gonna he's just going to keep infiltrating. <laughs> Jesus the Healer. So. How about whenever they turn from one channel to the other? There she is. Yes. Who's this blonde lady that keeps showing up on my TV? Yes. No, somebody's going to say that one day. They're going to say that. Who is this blonde lady? They keep showing up. Well, that's what happened with this one testimony. She said in the middle of the night, my mom, in the middle of the night. So this one, it's going to be uh, aired live, you know, or... or new once a week and then two more times that week they will re-air that broadcast so that's three times in one week one episode is going to be able to go across uh, all these different homes in this new network so i i would encourage you be a part of this because your money it goes further than than the starbucks you know listen fifty dollars Hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. It, it does thousand dollars. It doesn't get a whole whole lot, but I, it can get a whole lot of healing, a whole lot of souls. So, um, 
we we are so grateful to be a part of what God's doing in this time and in this hour. And we just invite you to be part of it with us. That's all. Co-laborers together. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Um, so we just wanted to, to let you know about partnership in case you didn't know. Not every ministry has a, um, a partnership program, but we do. And um, one of the other things that I, I get the privilege, Bible school students. I get the privilege of announcing, where are you? Can you please stand up? All the Bible school students that came. Can you stand up? We've got some up here. Back here, some are standing there. Wave your hand, Bible school students. Okay, now, if you were a former Bible school student, stand to your feet. No, no, stay standing. The eternal Bible school. <laughs> Y'all can be seated. We have World Harvest Bible Training Center. They're on spring break, so don't you be concerned. Um, they came up here. Many of them are serving. They want to be in the meetings. Uh, we're, we're grateful that they're here. We love seeing them. They're family to us. Uh, those that we get to see even uh, outside at these meetings, they come and they serve. They are our family. We have a full-time Bible school Monday through Thursday, 830 to 1130 every day. If you are looking for a place to go and grow, and receive impartation and revelation and demonstrations. Be a part of what God is doing right now. And just growing maybe maybe for fivefold ministry. Or maybe you say, I just, there's something burning in me. And I want to be a greater help and a greater supply to the body of Christ, to my pastor. There's more I can do. There's more I can give. There's more I've got to receive. More training I need. We're, we're talking to you. If you're interested, out there in the foyer or in the, the book and table, there is uh, information we would love to get into your hands regarding the Bible school. You can find, you saw them standing up, talk to somebody. You can talk to me, you can grab one of our staff, and we would just love to answer any questions you may have about our Bible school. Pastor Nancy is the president of the Bible school. She's speaking at graduation this year. She's always like, well, I said, we, we want to hear you. We want to hear the president, yeah. right? Starts with the head, and then whatever she's got, we just want to sit under and receive that. She'll come in, if I can say this about her, she'll come in, she'll have a day of filming, five episodes, but she'll come in an hour, do an hour before filming for, what, three hours, three and a half hours? about four hours she'll do a whole hour in the bible school give to the students and then go sit and film for tv the bible school is a big priority to this ministry and to pastor nancy so if you're interested in that if you're watching email us get online we've got our my brother-in-law has done a great job there's we have an own instagram social media go look at the photos uh, message us ask questions if you're interested start looking into it now don't wait until you realize you've missed God and you didn't sign up. Make arrangements now. Amen. It's, it's, it's worth every bit of what you sacrifice. It's never a sacrifice because God will multiply, multiply everything back into your life when you obey him. Amen. So, um, we, we just wanted to let you know about some of those things and I'm going to get out of here real quick. Uh, so Reverend can come up and receive this offering. He does such a good job. Yes. Pastor has this book, Victory Over Grief and Sorrow. Uh, one of the things she said, I just spoke with somebody today on the phone. Uh, they're facing a, a serious situation that could be very sorrowful. They did the right thing, but it, there was some consequences. And I said, don't, don't, let, don't let that sorrow, don't let that sorrow set in. Don't let that grief set in because it'll lead to depression, oppression, and a place you, you don't want to have to try to dig your way out of. Well, how about we have the answer before the test ever comes? If you don't have that, you say, well, I'm not facing any grief or sorrow. Get this book and you better have it ready and on hand 
for when something shows up that may try to take your mind in a wrong direction. Life, uh, things in life change very quickly. That's not a negative confession. The winds come, the storms show up, but we want to be prepared with the word of God uh, ready as our answer beforehand. And this one, I have a supply. Uh, and this book that probably should go with it, Love the Great Quest. If you were here this morning, you heard a little taste of the importance of oh, flowing in love, walking in love, being staying in the place of love, and how it's going to affect, uh, it'll affect your finances, it'll affect the supply, how God can get you and get to you what he has for you. Many people say, well, God, as They've talked about in the morning means, God, I'm praying, I need money, I need money, I need money. He can see everything that you need. It's not about a need. It's effective releasing of faith and praying. She helps us in this book, I Have a Supply, to know what you have, but also know how to get what you need. Get what you really, we could say, get what you already have. It may not be in your hands, but it's already available, already been made available for you. Amen. So if you have a financial need or you're struggling, seem to be struggling financially, that's a great book for you to have and begin to read and to study on. Amen. Reverend Joel. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yes. I, I was so stirred and touched by hearing those testimonies were you and if 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 i could just have the liberty to to tag on to what was said about partnership you know uh you you almost can't understand all that's included with a spiritual connection until you're in it until you have it and uh i mean i amy and i can testify that our lives are so different because of uh oh just obeying God to connect when he's told us to connect, connect and, this, and everything, my goodness. Pastor, thank you for all you've obeyed and all you've said yes to. And I, I know it, it looks like there's, there's been so much increase and in so many great things, but there's so much more. There's so much more. And uh, we just rejoice and believe it all comes to pass. It all comes to pass. I, I would like to just encourage you uh, as we get ready to receive the offering tonight. Uh, through, from the Word of God. Have you turned to the third chapter of Galatians, if you would, please? The offering's not a sad time of the service. <laughs> just, you know, just to remind you, just to remind you, no, it, it, nobody's trying to extract anything from you. Friends, this is an opportunity to connect to all that is being offered through this ministry. And so many times your financial gift can create a spiritual connection. I say that without apology. An offering is an opportunity. It's an avenue. Yeah, we're supporting, but it's so much more than what we would call a donation. It's a connection. It's a connection, and things don't just flow from you. Things flow to you, to you. Amen. In Galatians, the third chapter, forgive me, I didn't turn there, but I'm pretty quick. Like pretty quick. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Galatians 3. Uh, we, we love the um, 13th verse in this chapter as well as a whole lot of other verses, but we're just going to read this 13th and 14th verse where it says, Christ has redeemed us. Oh, could you say amen to that? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it's written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Do you know, brothers and sisters, that everything that could be considered a curse in this world and in your life, you've been redeemed Jesus bore for us the curse, the curse of sin, the curse of sickness, the curse of poverty and lack. It's been born, and he, he paid a great price for you and I to no longer be under the curse. Could you say this with me? I'm free from the curse. Say it again. Come on. I'm free from the curse. 
And that is, that is amazing. It's wonderful. As wonderful as it is, it's not all of it. Because when Christ redeemed us, he didn't just remove negative things from our life. He also brought some things to our lives that previously weren't in our lives. And the next verse talks about that. And forgive me if I'm smiling real big because I know what I'm about to read. <laughs> you ever get excited before you eat the meal? Yeah, all the time, all the time. I, I dance my way to the table sometimes. Glory to God. Just make my own party on the, on, on, on the way there. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. Verse 14 says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Notice that part of our redemption is that the blessing comes upon us. The blessing. The blessing. And he calls it the blessing of Abraham. Here's why I'm smiling so big. Because I, I like to say it this way. The blessing as Abraham experienced it. The blessing as Abraham had it. Now, time does not permit us to fully examine how blessed Abraham was. But, but let me just tell you one thing. The Bible says in the 13th chapter of Genesis, the second verse, that Abram, Abraham was very rich in cattle and in silver and in gold. You might say, I don't want cattle. Would you take the silver? And the go because because really uh, there's not a bucket big enough to receive your cattle in the offering here tonight. So thank you anyhow. But the silver and the Abraham was very rich, very rich. And when he and then listen when he got attacked by an enemy, uh, actually when neighbors when his relatives got attacked by an enemy, he took his own army. How many was it? Three hundred eighteen was it something along those lines? Three hundred some soldiers from his own house. He's like, okay, forget the army, forget the Navy, forget the Air Force. I'll just use my own because it'll be quicker. And they took his own and he plundered, plundered them. Abraham was one of the most blessed friends. He lived to be 175 years old. He was so blessed in every area. And the New Testament, the New Testament you want to say, well, the Old Testament is not for us? Fine. The New Testament says that the blessing, like Abraham had it, comes on us through Jesus. Yes. Boom. <laughs> Hello. Christ redeemed us. Christ rede the curse has been removed so that the blessing might come. The, the blessing, how, how, how should I think of this, Lord? How should I think of this blessing? Uh, go look at Abraham. Look at it. See what Abraham had? That's what you're supposed That's what you're supposed to be looking at. That's what you're supposed to be expecting. The blessing like Abraham had it comes on us through Jesus. Through Jesus. All oh, glory to God. Since you have that, you might want to participate tonight as we give. Amen. Glory to God. Boy, we were shouting until we said that, didn't we? <laughs> Anybody here, you need an, an envelope that you don't have one. If you put your hands up, those ushers, you won't believe how fast they get you an envelope. They're so quick. Anybody, you need an envelope. And if you don't want to give by, uh, by cash or check, then there's other ways. We're given by text to give. Amen. And that's a blessing. There's all these different ways. Uh, participate, connect in this if you want to. Praise the Lord. And how many believe every need's met? Every bill's paid. And there's plenty more. Plenty more. Amen. Blessed like Abraham's blessed. <laughs> Abraham wanted to find a wife for his son. And he told his servant, load up about nine or ten camels. Full of jewelry and gold and all kinds of, just, just gifts. Just, just gifts. And he rolls into town with a department store on his on on of camels, just boom, 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 uh, 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 uh. all this stuff. And Rebecca, oh, come on now, you can't do that. You can't do that if you don't have Abraham's blessing. You can't do that. But we have the blessing of Abraham. 
We better pray. Father, we're grateful tonight. Thank you. What a, what a privilege. We are blessed. We are, say, friends, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are so blessed. We are so, so, so blessed. Thank you, Father, that it's so. Thank you for this offering that every need is met, that we can reach every household in this world. Glory to God, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Go right ahead. Receive that. Praise the Lord. We're going to sing here in just one second. I just feel so compelled to say this right now. And um, there's unction on what Pastor Morgan started there and what Brother Joel picked up about partnership. And I know who I'm talking to, but we're also talking to the Internet. That There's a lot of spiritual sons and daughters of Brother Hagen in this room, still are. The spiritual lineage of it. My earthly dad left. I didn't go and find another dad because mine went to heaven. And neither did I find another spiritual father. And one thing Brother Hagin said is, what's God doing in the last and final days? He's building strong local churches. Even in Fresno, California. Even in Fresno. Yes, even in Fresno. I lived here literally 60 years ago. Now, we moved really quickly because my dad's Pentecostal and you just traded churches like people trade cars. After you run out of sermons, you just trade and get another one. So he traded California for Florida. But we lived here in, and I drove by my old house. It's actually still there. We have the address. No, I didn't go knock on the door. But uh, So Brother Hagin said it like this, and there's a point to this, and I'm not going to talk long. What is he doing? What is he doing? So many beautiful, wonderful things, including bringing in the harvest by way of a voice and uh, strong local churches. I came to this meeting literally almost straight from Lox, Switzerland, which is very close. I stopped off in Tulsa long enough to do some laundry and got right back on the plane, literally just hours. And then from zero, actually Cindy was there too. Pastor, I haven't even had a chance to tell you. It was a minister's meeting, just pastor's meeting. Roughly probably about 120 to 150 pastors. Do you know that when you have 150 pastors in Switzerland, that would be like having 10,000? Do you understand the ramifications of that? And, And so many, and I'm not talking about one or two, so many came to me and said, we're watching Pastor Nancy. We're watching. We're watching Jesus the healer. We watch it every day. And what she's preaching, we're preaching in our churches. We're preaching to our congregation all over Europe. All over Europe. I've been going to Europe since the early 90s with Mark Razee. And now I'm seeing the fruit of even seed that he sowed. But the pastors, man, when you get pastors, they're saying, we're watching every day. And what we're feeding on, we're feeding our sheep. Well, they're feeding on this voice. And... Brother Joe, while you were talking, it rose up in my heart, which I'm so thankful when godly and good things rise up in my heart. I just stand. But I thought of this scripture where it says in Acts chapter 4, neither was there any among them that lacked. Not one. In a move of God, in the book of Acts, in the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, neither was there any, not one among them that lacked. But the next line after that says, neither was there any among them that lacked. For they that were possessors of houses and lands went and they had such an unction and motivation and something concerning a move of God on their heart, they started selling houses. So while he was talking, you know, it's just like, my God, I want to go home and put a for sale sign in the yard just to get a better offering to bring. Hallelujah. I don't know how big that would go over with. But anyway, uh, I don't know. I need to sing here, but I, I, I just, and sometimes some of these things are hard to get across, but when Brother Joe was saying, you'll never know the power and the anointing of a connection until you make it. And you'll never know the provision and the presence and the anointing and the prosperity and the protection and not only that just the revelation that comes on you when you participate in another man's assignment and you even make their assignment bigger than your own and you make your partnership a higher priority than your own than your own agenda 
And I, I literally, before I sing, I want to say publicly to the Dufresne family and Pastor Nancy, I don't know every detail of, of the ministry. I, I, I'm not, this family has laid it all on the line. Did they tell me that? Nope. Nope, but I've been around a few years. Hallelujah. And right now, at this critical juncture, before the catching away, before Jesus comes, he's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. But he has voices to bring in that fruit. So, guys, there's unction on this. I know many of you took a card. and But here, the, the camera, uh, that one, <laughs> the internet. Guys that are watching, uh, it wasn't just in Switzerland a few days ago when the pastors came to me and said, tell her we're watching. Tell her we're watching. And just a few months before that, it's my time frame gets, I was in Manchester, England. Same thing. We watch Pastor Nancy all the time. When, when is she coming to us? And then I would go to another nation with Brother Copeland. When is she coming to us? I thought, my God, she'd have to have a resurrected body and be omnipresent to fulfill all the, uh, the invitations and the agenda. Guys, listen to me. And those that are watching the Internet, there's something happening right now in this ministry, this mantle, this anointing, this assignment. Do yourselves a favor. Grab on. Get in, grab a hold, so like never before, pray like never before. Something's happening right now. Good enough? Huh, Pastor Nancy, thank you. Thank you to you and your family for everything you're doing in all the steps, quantum leaps of faith that you've done just in the last few weeks. We just ought to lift up our hands right now and thank him for what's happening right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. What gear are you in? You fly? I came to worship you. to worship us will worship Him. These are the days when my Father's ways will be known to
worship Him in spirit and in truth. Right, this is the time. This is the time when true worshipers will worship Him. These are the days.
Father, we thank you tonight. We glorify you for the greatness of your plan. Jesus, you told Dad Hagen, I have a plan for every service. All that we may need tonight, that plan answers. So we purpose to hear, we purpose to receive, and we thank you. We thank you, we thank you tonight for your word. We honor what you have to say. And we give you thanks and praise and glory and honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, turn around and give somebody around you a great big God bless you tonight and you can be seated. that I so appreciate is um, those who respond to how God's leading them. And um, I just appreciate all the precious supply of those that are running the race along with us. I mean, we're all running the race that heaven authored for us, hopefully. <laughs> But there are those who, if I could say this, you've seen marathon runners and when they had the New York City Marathon, thousands of people run. And I mean, it takes minutes. It takes a bit after the gun goes off for the people in the back to even get to see any movement, right? Um, those who have the quickest times, they get to put them up front. And so you know where your time is. <laughs> <laughs> they put you further back if you don't have a, <laughs> the rating to be up front. But what I'm saying is this, is that all of us are running with our elbows bumping somebody else yes. next to somebody. And I tell you, I appreciate those that we get to run with because that's how we all keep running. I appreciate the staff this week. You don't know what all has happened just to make this place available to us in these services. And Brother David, like I, he said, him and Cindy just came from Switzerland. I know there are worse places to be coming from, but thank you so much. Uh, let me just tell you, this man ruined everything for me. Because he makes, he just does all the work so that when you walk up, you go, okay, it's just, he's already prepared everything and Miss Cindy and the worship team and Brother Tony and all the ones who, and Jacob, all these that are up here, they just make it so easy. And so nobody does anything apart from who you're supposed to be connected to. Not just connected anywhere, but who you're supposed to be connected to. And just know this, the devil would love to separate you from where God has told you to be. And he will use the most absurd things. He will use obvious things, but he will use the most absurd things to try to get you to be away from the place that God told you to be. 
And so just anything that God does with us, it takes so many hands and I so appreciate all the hands. And the seagulls coming and being a part this week, my, 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 is so rich. And the pastors that you come, can I tell you something? Uh, when pastors step into the room, the draw elevates. And uh, it's not that the people don't draw, but uh, there, it, different, different uh, flows have different draws. And we all make a draw, but there's, there's, when we all do our part, we all do our part. And so it's, it's just, isn't it fun to be in a place where everybody's putting their hand to it? Yeah. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, I come to these services just saying, God, whatever you want to do. And uh, we'll, just, we'll just begin and see where we land. How's that? Go with me if you would. I don't have a sermon along this line, so we're just going there. <laughs> Acts chapter 5. I just had a couple scriptures come to me. Uh, see, just two, 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 two. The, the paper has two lines. See, see. Two lines, and so it's up to it's up to us to respond and draw and and receive. Amen. Um, Acts chapter five. What I mean when I say David has ruined me when he's not there, it's like why isn't David here? Because it just makes things so easy. Acts chapter five and verse. 12, I want us to read it. It says, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought or worked among the people. And they were all with, look at this. What's, what's the next? One accord. One accord. Notice, notice miracles and one accord. Miracles and one accord. Signs and wonders, one accord. Why? Because division has no flow of blessing in it. You have to be in one accord because God's not, God can't manifest uh, in division. Why? Because there's nothing in Him divisive. So when we want God to manifest, we come into oneness. Oneness of purpose, oneness of heart, oneness of thought. Oneness of intent and motive, right? So it says, And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, durst no man join himself to them. Talking about those who were not of that one accord. They didn't just come up and step, anybody just step in. You had to be in one accord to be part of this. Uh, it says, But the people magnified them. Verse 14, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. So we, we, want, we want this, we want the Lord to add. Yes. But notice what was part of the addition is the manifestation of Him. Right. Yeah. 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 Miracles and yeah. meeting the needs of the people. Yeah. And people see that's a place I can get my, need, my, my life answered, yes. you know, and yeah. get needs met. Yeah. So it's not, we have, to, we have to let the people know there's something available of why you even want to be joined to this, right? And um, again, verse 14, And believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And there came also a multitude out of the cities round about. So it's okay to travel to get fed. Because everything you need is not always within your convenience distance. It's where, it's what you, you know... Faith is not looking for convenience. It's, it's looking for results. Right? And so there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem. 
bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, which makes absolutely no human sense. People are getting healed and we're mad. <laughs> Why? Because when people are in need and people are, they're, they're vulnerable to whoever wants to tar- take charge of those people. That's why Jesus frees us so we're not vulnerable. That's one, one reason. And it says, and they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. (laughs) I love that. People need words. They had miracles. And that was right. But once you receive miracles and you taste of the goodness of God, for your daily life you need words. Go speak all the words to this life. The devil didn't mind them having miracles as long as they didn't get the words. So they were able to minister to the people and people received miracles. But then the interruption came and says, don't, don't let them move into knowledge. Don't let them hear what God has to say. That's good. Come on. So the devil interrupted, not before the miracles, but before the words. Interesting to see this, right? Why? Because when you know words, you're not dependent on people. You're not dependent on the apostle to show up and minister to you. I'm not diminishing what they bring. But I'm saying words make you an intelligent victor. Not a leaning believer. And so the devil, uh, it's very strategic. Don't let them hear words, yeah. words. Why? Words of this life. Why? Because we're, our, our, whole, um, our whole walk in this life is about what we know. What right. we know. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Who Amen. we know. Yeah. 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 Not people I'm talking no. about, no. but it's about words. And if I could say something to you this week, thank God we love the privilege to minister to people, but that's not the, the climax of what God is offering you in these services. He's offering you words that you carry back home and you start changing things based on words that land in you. So don't diminish the hearing of words over the desire to see the miracles. Words will lead us to miracles, but I'm just, I'm not, I'm saying don't value one more than the other. We need it all. We need it all. I cannot tell you how many times my husband and I would go into um, other countries, no doubt, Brother David and Cindy and others who have traveled overseas have seen the same thing. I, I'm thinking of one, one, one trip in particular. And I tell you what, the, the praise and worship was going on and they had great praise and worship. And I, the people, all the people were in it. Uh-huh. All the people were, were hooked in. And I thought, man, we're gonna, it is going to be so easy to preach. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they sat down and they sat down. Wow. And they had no interest in hearing words. They wanted the beat of the music. They liked what appealed to just the soulish. They just held themselves in the soulish. And I tell you, your answers are not in the soul of man. Your answers are in the words of this life. The words of this life. 
And whether you know it or not, God started out these meetings talking about righteousness because your life is in those words. Your miracles are in those words anytime you need them. Your help is in those words that you are the righteousness of God. You can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive anything you need, anytime you need, whether there's another minister around or not, whether there's another church service uh, on the calendar or not. Anytime you know that you, you know these words that I, I am right with God. I belong in his presence. I have total access Full access. I am a partaker of the divine nature, the righteousness of God. Amen. And so it's so interesting to note that the devil was trying to interrupt them hearing words because if they don't hear the right thing, what they received can be easily lost. They are easy targets when they don't know words. Uh, somebody said, uh, no, it was Dad Hagen was talking to some minister. I don't know. He didn't name the minister, the pastor. And Dad Hagen would talk about how he so loved and honored the pastoral office. He said, I would, and he would be traveling at this time. He pastored for 12 years, but afterwards he was on the road traveling. And he said, I would stand in the other room and hear someone present a problem to their pastor. And he says, I would hear the wisdom of that office answer for that congregation member the need. And he said, I would just stand and weep at the, the, the outflow of that pastoral office, the words, because that pastor knew what to tell the people in their moment of crisis. And Dad Hagen asked, um, I, I can't, no, Dad Hagen was telling it, I can't say who asked it, but there was a man who had a very large church and the, the pastor was asked, what's the key to your success? And he said this, have the right words for the people. You have, they have to have answers. They have to have answers for their life. If, you, if people know they can come and hear answers, they'll show up. Yeah, oh, that's good. Now, they, they may come for some other reason for a short time. I love something that uh, Buddy Harrison used to say. He said, uh, what you do to get people, talking about pastors trying to fill their churches, what you do to get them is what you have to do to keep them. So make sure you get them with the word. Because if you get them with a, a program, if you get them with a social work, if you get them with, with a, a, a music group, if you get them with uh, some kind of uh, outreach, then once that event is over, they're gone. Because that, they only came for what they were one with. Dad Hagen would say this, and this is good for pastors to know this, he said there were times that he was invited to participate when an, a certain evangelist would come to the area and he, they would ask him to participate in the meetings and if they participated and helped and did things, then those who got born again, that evangelist would just funnel those people to those different pastors' churches. And Brother, ha Brother Hagen says, no, thank you, I'm not participating. People would say, why not? And he says, because they're brought in on the wrong thing. That's right. Those people that are supposedly getting born again are brought in on the wrong thing. They're brought in on a performance. They're brought in on something, uh, at the, the charisma of the preacher. They're not brought in on the basis of the word. And he said, you can't do anything with that. They're, that's not the fruit that I want in my church. Words of this life. Words of this life. Words. This is what the angel, the angel gave them very specific directions. I'm getting you out of prison so you can give words. Amen. And that's still what God is wanting for his people is words. Because when you have your shelves stocked with words, at a moment's notice, you can draw out that truth. And you can lay it in the place of need. And not only that, you know, Morgan was talking about the book, Victory Over Grief and Sorrow. There's somebody around you grieving. There's someone around you sorrowful. You need to know the right answers. I have pastors that call me. 
pastors I haven't seen in years even, precious, yeah, precious yeah. people, and they say I'm entrenched mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for years in depression. Yeah. I am, mm -hmm. I, I'm at the end. I can't do it. Can you tell me something to help me? I said, you sure can. Sure. I sure can. Mm -hmm. I sure can. Well, I've got words. words. I've got words. words. And your answer is in these words, and you yeah. value the words. Right. How we treat the word is how we're treating God. Right. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Hallelujah. His words. His words. His words. Uh, what's that mean? Be hungry. Be hungry to hear the word taught to you, not just to see something. Yeah. Thank God, when we teach the word, we're going to see something. I'm not diminishing that, but I'm saying you need, to, you need to be hungry for every flow and everything God offers you, not just select things of a service. Amen. Words, 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 words. Dad Hagen talked about a, um, an instance uh, years ago when um, they, there was brought to him a child and Dad Hagen said, I laid hands on, on that child, but he said that healing anointing didn't go in. Yeah. The healing anointing didn't go in. Mm -hmm. And this child uh, was not developing right physically or mentally and he went back to his hotel room and he prayed for a time and asked God, why did that healing anointing not go in? And uh, God spoke to him, I believe, on the third day of him talking to God about this. And he said, because that child needs a miracle, I've anointed you with healing power. You don't have the miracle. That, that tangible healing, yeah, yeah. it's a tangible healing anointing in your hand. Right. That child needs a miracle. Yeah. That child was born with something missing in its brain. Yeah. He needs something created. There's nothing there to heal. Yeah. It's right. missing. Right. Right. Something has to be created. Right. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so, and so, um, so God said to him, that healing anointing won't work in that situation. Sure. Yeah. The, the child needs a creative miracle. Yeah. 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 And he said this, uh, so he said, well, is there no help? And he said, yes. If you can get the mother to agree with you. Yeah. Use her faith. Yeah. And the two of you pray in faith. Yeah. The child can receive. Sure. So the next night he asked, is that mother here that had that baby yeah. that was I, I ministered to and came up that, that she was there and he told the mother uh, what God said to him. Yeah. What, was his, what, what did God say? Uh, that words believed will cause brains to be made whole. Words. Words are enough. Words are enough. But see, we only think that something we feel is enough. And... and uh, 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 something tangible. Yeah. Listen, I'm not diminishing that, but with, if you don't, you don't have to feel something tangible no. right. to receive what words can produce. Can I tell you this? Remember, Brother Joel made reference to it one of the morning services. I, I think I mentioned it Monday night. Uh, when God brought them forth out of Egypt, he brought them forth what? With silver and gold and not one, not one feeble one among them. And then Brother Joel, the Tuesday morning, got up and said, not one feeble one among them, but not one broke one among them. How did that divine transfer of wealth from the Egyptians take place into the hand of the Hebrews. Words. They heard what Moses said. Moses commanded, said, go demand of your masters. What is this? 400 years of back pay. With interest. And they went and spoke words. No power. No 
no tangible something. They just each went to the master and the wealth of the household was turned over at words. What am I saying? Don't diminish your words being filled with his words. It's not just your words. It's your words filled with his words. His words in your mouth will accomplish. Uh, God told Brother Hagen, he didn't even say about that baby who is missing something in the brain. He didn't say have all the ministers present to come up right. and circle around, right. find someone with a miracle. On. He didn't no. say that. He right. said, if you can get the mother yeah. to agree, yes. the two of you releasing faith, yes. it will do it. Yes. Words. Yes. Words. Yes. Words. And the angel commanded them when they were delivered by divine intervention, go and speak all the words of this life. Not of the words of your circumstances. Not, not all the words of your religion. The words of this life. The life of God is on the inside of you. What this life will produce Amen. Amen. I was telling this testimony. I heard it uh, from a person who had firsthand, um, firsthand conversation with the person involved in this. And um, this woman was, I believe, 84 at the time she's telling it. She was telling, let me tell the story. Um, this gal was about 21 years old in, in another country. She had four or five children already by the time she's 21. They are all in a car driving down a road and they had a cataclysmic accident. Yeah. And the children lived, but the mother was instantly killed. Mm -hmm. And she's only 21 and it took off the top of her skull. So there, you know what that means. There's nothing holding everything in place. I'm trying to be gracious. And so when the paramedics, the ambulance arrived, they just, they put her aside because, I mean, she's obviously gone. And everything that had they just gathered up and laid right by her. Yeah. And they tended to the children. Yeah. They got them stabilized, got them in. Then they later came and got a body bag, put her in the body bag with everything there. Yeah. Right. And they took her body to the morgue. They took the children to the hospital. And they were able to contact this girl's mother. And they, the mother lived um, in another... In a, it, another state and a half away, basically, from where this had happened. So it would be quite a drive for her to get there. And when they reported and they said, your daughter is dead, I don't know how much description they gave, but she said, oh, all she needs is resurrection power. That's all she needs. She didn't say, oh, all we need is the, pre is the preacher. All we need is the pastor. All we need, all she needs is resurrection power. What'd she do? She went to words. She went to words. She didn't run to people. She ran to words. She ran to words. She turned to words because everything is in the words of this life. Everything is in the words of this life. Everything is in the words of this life that you need. And so that was her response. See, it matters what words you choose. It, because the words you choose are the words you're spending over your situation. And the words you choose are what you're inviting into your situation. 
When a pastor asked Dad Hagen years ago, he said, Dad, every time I minister to someone, in, and he had a large congregation, in my congregation that's fallen into a coma, they've always died. I've never been able to see that change to them coming out of the coma and everything be revived. And he said, am I not ministering effectively? Is there something I need to know about, about ministering to someone in a coma? And Dad Hagen said, yes, there's something you need to know. You need to know what, would, what were the last words they spoke before they went into the coma. Yeah, yeah. Because he said their words either opened the door to God or closed Those the door eyes. to God. It was words. It was words. And he was saying, your, your faith can't trump their words. Because yeah. your words don't mean as much over them as their words mean over yeah. them. Yeah. And so he said, if they said, uh, if they speak words of doubt, words of fear, words of unbelief, he said, you, you, you can't get the situation turned. It's up to their words. Train yourself in words. Train yourself that your first response is the words that, that speak the outcome you want. Not the words of your drama. Not the words of the situation. Not the words of relatives who, who haven't been taught what you've been taught. You got no business laying down truth you've been taught just because of relatives around you that are not going to be as accountable as you are for their words if they haven't been taught what you've been taught. Amen. And too many times people just come with the idea, I, I, just, I just come to services so God can fix this and God can fix that. His primary way he's going to fix things in your life is with words. Giving you words. Value. Love the word. That means you need to be sitting on the edge of your seat, not on the... Right, right. Because you don't know when these words are going to be called for. The words of this life. The words of this life. And so that mother of the young mother said all she needs is resurrection power. See, how many people would have thought to go to those words at that report? Not many. Not many. And so all the way there, she's driving... And it took her about a day and a half to drive there. And she was praying in tongues the whole time. And the daughter was in the morgue. And there was a worker there in the morgue. And he heard something move. And he, he thought, that's just nerve reflexes. Well, I don't know if he knew this wasn't a chicken. You know, <laughs> right? But you would want to console yourself that this is just, if you're, if you're that worker, this is just muscle reflex or nerve something, you know, that's, right? <laughs> and, um happened a couple more times yes. and he goes oh no <laughs> and he goes over and unzips the body bag and her eyes open and he you, you, you understand he said no 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 why not because he didn't want her to live he said you're a mess physically you understand there's Things missing now. Yes. Vitals. Yes. No, because he didn't want her to just be coming to and suffering. Yes. But when you're living, you have to be moved from the morgue. He had to follow procedure and had her transferred to the hospital. And the mother arrived and found out she was at the hospital and the mother climbed up on top of her. And spoke words. Yes. Spoke words. Yes. 
Jesus said, be careful what you're hearing. The measure of thought and study you give, this Amplified Classic, to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue or power and knowledge that comes back to you. Jesus said, I only say what I hear. What's, what's, how's he ministering to the people? Based on words. Based on words. Is there anointing? Yes. But the anointing meets the words. You've got to have the right words for the anointing to flow unhindered. Amen. Amen. So Jesus valued words. He valued words. So that mama stayed with that daughter of hers just in the hospital, just speaking the word, just speaking the word. What is it? The words of this life. (laughs) And um, she comes, she basically heals up. She comes back. She comes back mentally as a Mm seven-year-old. That's where they've tested her out. Mm -hmm. And so for a short time, she's sitting and playing with her own children. Mm -hmm. She doesn't realize she's their mother. But over a short time, it all just keeps coming back and coming back and coming back and coming back. And she was perfectly restored mentally. So in her 50s, this girl had grown. She had actually, after this accident, she had another child. And this child became a pastor. And so um, the mother, not the, the, the daughter mother, <laughs> not the mother mother, the daughter mother, <laughs> uh, she grew 50 years old and she decided she wanted to come, become a private detective. And so she had to go through Testing. She, she, she loved investigating. And, and so they sent her. She had to go through certain, you know, just preliminary tests just to, to enter that profession. And the doctor came in after having done certain tests, and he said, you can't be alive. And she goes, well, I am. He goes, you can't be alive. And she goes, why? He goes, you have no frontal lobe of your brain. It's gone. God didn't replace it. He bypassed it. Bypassed it. He just bypassed it. Gave her the function of it without the substance of it, because faith is the substance. 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 (laughs) So there was substance, just not in this realm. But the substance of that realm sustained the lack of substance in this realm because faith is the substance that every other substance is born out of. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by Don't value tangibility of anointing above words that come out of the mouth of God because we are on this planet because of words. And you, are, and, you and I are being hosted continually every day because these, this planet and solar system and everything of creation is being upheld by the word of his power. Not the power of his word, the word of his power. Glory to God. You're sustained on this earth because of words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's so good. 
Our lives are a product of our words. I, our words are a product. Our lives are the product of our words. You're born again because of words. Yeah. You're healed because of words. You're peaceful because of words or you're troubled because of words. Your home is a joy because of words or, you're, or your home is harassed because of words. You choose the words of your life. You choose. The devil will offer you words, but you don't have to choose them. Praise the Lord. I, there's so much when the, when the, I mean, you talk about a preaching assignment. Just go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. It takes you the rest of your life to do that. It takes the rest of your life to do that. All the words of this life. When you come to church, come expecting to hear all the words of this life. Amen. Now go with me, if you would, to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And I'm going to start reading in verse 1. If you ever want to hear the prayer life of Jesus, this chapter is his exact fellowship with his Father. We, had, we have snippets of it, you know, when you would hear him pray, Thou art our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He went his teaching his disciples about praying. But this is a whole, this is a whole uh, conversation that he's having with his father right before he's arrested. So uh, John chapter 17, verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. And said, can I tell you this? Have words that lift your eyes. Not words that cast you down. And make sure that when you're looking to heaven, it's proper words for heaven. Right? And it says, and he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Wait a minute. I didn't finish the story. I need to finish the story. The mother and the mother, the, 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 the daughter mother. The mother and the daughter mother. So they come in when she's 50 and they say, you can't be alive. (laughs) But she is. Um, She was telling this to a preacher friend of mine at 84 years of age. 84 years of age. She was giving this firsthand account. Because does it matter what the people around your life believe about words? Let me tell you something. You can love your family. Love your family. Come on. Be a light in your family. Yeah, yeah. Come on. But live based on the words of this life, not based on the words of your family. That is right. Amen. Amen. Good. Means you're going to have to stand up sometimes in the face of those you love and say, I love you, but I know something different. Come on. That's good. That's right. I'm just telling you. Yes, you do. Amen. You have to fight for your words yes. to not be changed. Amen. Amen. By people who mean well and love you, but don't know the words of this life. And learn to surround your life with people who know the words of this life. It matters that you seek out the fellowship of people who know the words of this life and not just the feelings of... Well, okay, verse 3. Jesus, I love this phrase. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work 
which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. My goodness, you're hearing these things. I have manifested thy name. Wow. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. And they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Now look at verse 8. For I have given unto them the words. I gave them words. He, at this moment, is not talking about the miracles. He's not talking about the anointing. And I'm not diminishing that. But he gave them that which all this flows from, the words. The words parent everything. The words are, the words are how you move things, receive things. And he said, I have given, look at this. You know, when someone knows they're fixing to leave this planet, that's the time when you're going to hear something that means the most to them. If you'll take advantage of those moments. Jesus knows he's getting ready to leave. And he says, for I have given unto them the words. The words. Not the ministry. So many people are after ministry. Just be after words. Words. Words make you a minister. Having the right words. Then you know what to minister to people. The right words. And so he said... I have given unto them not just words, the words. So not all words are worth having, but the words are. I have given unto them the words, which words? Which thou gavest me. Ah, now he's, now, he, now we know. How do we do the same things he did and greater things? We take what he used. Where did he give the words he spoke? He got them from the Father. He said, I I gave them what you gave me. In other words, if we will take the words he gave us, then our lives should produce what they produce through him because they're the exact same words that God gave him and and Jesus passed those words to us and says, now go do the same thing. It's all by words. That's why the devil will, if I could say this, um, try to devalue mm-hmm. words right. 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 because they're so accessible. Words are something we, we, we deal with every day. Every day we deal with words. So we start losing the value of the words because they're just words. But they're not. They're conductors. Words are conductors. They're conductors of something. And we get to choose what's conducted based on the words we choose. It's amazing. It's an amazing system. By words. Um, Remember when Morgan read the testimony and the mother and the daughter... We're going to go to the meeting and you're going to be healed. Words. I didn't do so much. Her words. Her words. She just showed up. She, I just showed up. Just do that. She made the hard choice. She made the important choice. Because it would have been easy for her to say, I've been this way since October. Yeah. I'm not getting better. She made the right choice to say I'm going against every bit of this and I'm getting something different than I've got based on words. That was all her words. And her words created a landing pad for the power of God. Her words did that. Your words do that too. 
Your words do that. Yes. Amen. Um, John Osteen. I heard him tell the testimony years ago. If you can ever get hold of some of John Osteen's sermons, do it. They are so rich. And he told about a woman who came to his church. She was a young mama. She had never been in a church that taught her anything about faith. She had never heard that healing was available. And she had a child that was born uh, crippled, unable to walk, had never walked in its life. And this child, when she came to the church, was about five years old. And from the time it had, was out of a bed, it had just lived in a wheelchair throughout the day. It had never walked, just lived in a wheelchair so she could move the child around. And she heard words at John Osteen's church about healing. She had no idea that her baby could be healed. But when she heard words of this life, she chose to hang on to them. Hold fast to that which thou hast. Hold fast to that which thou hast. People say, well, when I get healing, I'll hold fast to it. You have it before it's ever manifested. Hold fast to that. You have it by words, not by feeling. You're not healed because your body changed. You're healed because of words. Jesus paid the price, but God gave us words to say in the face of sickness and disease, and we have to hold fast to those words so that we hold fast to what we already have in Christ. And when we do that, things will get off of our, off of our health. You are not the sick trying to get healed. You are the healed and symptoms are trying to rob your health from you. You're, you're not trying to get something. You're getting something off of what's already yours. You're not trying to get prosperity. You are the prosperous and you're saying lack no more. You get off my supply. You get off my flow. You are not trying to get it. It's already yours. You have already been blessed with all yes. spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You don't have to get anything. No. You've just got to not permit what you already have to be robbed. So you're, you're, you're driving things off. How are you going to do it? With words. Not feelings. Words. Not sympathy. Words. And uh, so this mama got hold of what Pastor Osteen was preaching. And she realized it was her faith, that she was, her faith was going to play a role in this. So she, I would, I would dare to say, maybe she was unconsciously led by the spirit of what to do. But she decided for an hour every day, I'm taking that baby out of that wheelchair. Why? Because that baby lives in that wheelchair. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Apart from when it's in bed or in the bath, right. it's in the wheelchair. Right. And you see, you have to violate. Uh -huh. You have to violate uh -huh. things that you get used to. Yeah. And she took, she didn't just leave the child in the wheelchair and speak to it. She took the child out. Uh -huh of the place it didn't belong. And she said, I put, I put the baby on his stomach because he couldn't even sit up by himself. You know, he just, he had no strength. So she would put him on the floor on his tummy and she would just pull him around real slow. And he thought they were having playtime. And the whole time she's saying, thank you for wholeness. Thank you that his legs work. She just worship. What's she doing? Words, 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 words. She's choosing her words. Choosing her words and then acting like those words are true. She did that for an hour. The first day, the first week, the first month, the first six months, the first nine months, the first 12 months, every, every day, an hour. Every day, every day, an hour. Uh, how much we believe words will define our consistency. Amen. 
we're consistent based on what we believe about the words. I mean, if, the, if, if somebody were to tell you, we have this big lottery pot here for you. If you will show up every day for six months and buy a lottery ticket, I guarantee you at the end of that six months, you will, you will receive this. Would you not show up based on those words? They guarantee you. The words of this life guarantee you something. Show up every day. Show up every day with your faith in those words. And so that's what she did every day. She just pulled that baby around for an hour. This went on for a year. Nothing changing. Nothing looking different. But she held to her words. The devil's after your words. He's after your words. He wants you to, to let go of your words. He wants you to take on wrong words, uh -huh. to dilute yes. right words. Yes. Amen. And so after a year, she went one day to pick him up again out of the wheelchair. And this day, he just jumped up <laughs> and took off running. Why? Because she believed words. She believed words and she kept saying words. When the body said something different, she believed the words more than she believed the body. She believed the words more than she believed the history. Amen. And Jesus said, Father, I have given them the words. The words that you gave me. The words that produced in my ministry and my life will produce the same thing for them. Words. Thank God for our words. We need to get back to what was begun in the infancy of the Word of Faith movement, that that is people paid attention to their words. Uh, somebody asked um, Charles Finney on an occasion. Charles Finney was a revivalist. Great revivals happened. Much, much fruit out of his ministry. He was in the New England states. There was one revival that went on, I believe, for like a six-month period. Over 100,000 people born again. He would not record you as fruit unless you were in a local church. And there were over 100,000 converts during that period of time. But he didn't do that alone. There was a man by the name of Father Nash who would have his part and he would pray. And really, he didn't even come to the meetings. He would find a home, uh, rent, uh, you know, rooms. Back then, they would just rent rooms of a home to travelers. And he would uh, just hole up in those rooms and not come out and just pray. And pray and pray and pray. And so because people knew of him, but they didn't know him. So somebody asked Charles Finney, what is Father Nash like? And I thought it's so interesting. He said, he's a quiet man like all people who pray. Yes. Wow. Now, what he meant by that is, when you understand your words are a currency, you choose them wisely. You don't just rattle them unwisely. You got around Dr. Sumrall, you got around Brother Hagen. they were warm, they were engaging, but they were so aware of their conversation because they knew they lived by words. I'm just, they, they, weren't, they weren't rigid in their conversation. They did not speak in scripture and verse, but, scri but scripture and verse governed their conversations. Now that's what you do. It's not like every conversation is a scripture. But the word governed their conversations because they understood that the words are the currency of this life. Governing the life of God that's on the inside. Amen. Well, that's what God had for us tonight. Words. Just words. And everyone's got them. And we need to purify them. Learn the words that work for us and the words that don't. Get rid of the words that don't work. And implement and employ the words that do work. 
and realize this, we can receive what we need on our own from God based just using our words. Amen. Thank God that we have help from others. But our words, our words will move us into that which we desire for our life. Because what you don't want to do is to be a victim of someone else's presence. Meaning this is that you're only helped as long as certain people are present. Words will move you into a help for others. And you can, anytime, you know exactly what to do with your words. Amen. Value words. Stand with me to your feet tonight. Father, we thank you. Are you helped? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We shouldn't be mindless about these things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift up our hands, lift up our voice. We thank you, Father. You know, God helps us To be effective with our words, not only does he show us and give us the right words, show us what right words sound like, but he helps us to be effective with our words when he says, when the psalmist says, Psalm 34 verse 1, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Why? Because those are words that will produce the right thing all the time. And it's so easy. We need to establish in us the habit, the good spiritual habit of praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, because that's an open door for His power. Amen? Amen. Praise should be, if I could say this, our neutral ground. That if we're not having a conversation, we come back to praise. If we're not doing this, we just come back to praise. If we're not at work, we just come back to prayer. Just that's our neutral ground. Amen. And that will hold us in a flow of right words all the time. Amen. Praise the Lord. We worship you, Father. Let's let's do let's do what something. Praise God. There's a song, and it, it goes like this: My son. Attend to my words, incline thine ear to my sayings, and let them not depart from thine eyes. Oh, and keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life. Oh, for they are life. They are life to those who find them. They are life to those who find them and hell to Attend to my words, incline thine ear to my sayings, I'll let them not depart from my eyes. Come on, say, I'll keep them in the midst. I'll keep them in the midst of my Yeah. 
So health is as close as your words, right? It's in you. And how do you draw that health into a, a flow? Through words. Amen. It flows through words. Anytime we want to, we can tap into that flow. Anytime we want to become a partaker of the divine nature. Remember what it says in Peter, a partaker. Of, a, of the divine nature, not just a container of the divine nature, but a partaker. It's flowing in our everyday life. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We glorify you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. Those that you have pain in your lower back, the power of God is moving right now to heal that. All you have to do is say, I receive it. I receive of that. Not only that, give action to that. Move, do something you couldn't do before. We're not checking to see if it worked. We're giving the anointing action. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for it. Just move that around. Just move that around. And it seems to me it's um it's 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 like that anointing is centralized in that lower back, but it's radiating up and radiating down. Amen. So in any area of yours, in that, that area, just receive it. Amen. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. We magnify you. We magnify you. Uh, there's, some, there's somebody uh, that growths that have been in your breast. I don't know if they are malignant or if they're, they're just growths. But you'll, you'll find out they're gone now. They're gone now. Hallelujah. So when, you, when you're at a, you go home or a private place and uh, you'll, you'll recognize they're gone now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We receive that. We receive that healing. We receive that freedom. We glorify you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We glorify, we magnify. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Someone with limited movement in your neck, you'll find out that you have full mobility now. Move that around. Just say, I receive that healing power. Move that around. Move that around. That which would have been hindered, that which would have been a difficulty or painful to move in a certain way, just move that around. 
We thank you, Father. We glorify you. There's someone's scalp condition that's being healed. A scalp condition that's being healed right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's been something a long time, a long time going, a long time going, and that's being healed right now. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We glorify you. There's internal organs that God's addressing right now. He's not telling me which ones. He just said internal organs. So if that's you, just say, I receive it. Put your hand in that region of the body and say, I receive it. I receive it. I thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. Those of you who are watching by live stream right now, or you watch it later, release your faith. Release your faith because that power will work for you. Why? Because the power of God meets faith. And faith is released through words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Someone's elbow is being healed. You had fallen on it and had injured that. That's being healed right now. Just move that around. Just move that around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Father. We glorify you. Just worship him. Just worship him. We glorify you, Father. to wait for me to call it out he's having me to call out some just as a sign that he will address your need if you'll release your faith for it amen God's not offering healing lotteries like if your numbers called out good for you no no uh, he's trying to give an example Amen. If he'll heal them, he'll heal you. Hallelujah. And that's that needs to be what your words say. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for healing me. I believe it was E.W. Kenyon who made this statement that it pleases God when you receive from him, not because you saw a change, just based on what he said to you. Amen. So how Abraham operated, he believed words. He believed words and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Sizzle, come here, love. Come here. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. We thank you for that which you have, that impartation that you hold. We thank you, Father. Mashtaka. And in this impartation is clarity for the future. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for the clarity. We thank you. We thank you. And all, and all that you have, all that you have in that, Father, all that that contains, we thank you, we glorify you, we magnify you, we worship you, we worship you. Mastikaye, mastikikiki yada basikikikiye, masetetetikiye. The seagulls, that that microphone is down by your. Just y'all, y'all come up and just follow both of you. Come up and just follow whatever's in your heart. 
Actually, you might need to go up here yes, just so they can see you. Hallelujah. Freedom, deliverance, help, rescue comes not from the processes of the mind. Come on. Yeah. Comes not from the help of man. But these things come as we perform and are faithful to feed on that which God has spoken. The words that God has spoken are our help. Yeah. Put his words in your heart. Yes. Then when needed, those words will rise from your heart, come out of your mouth. His words in your mouth bring victory. His words in your yes. mouth bring deliverance. Yes. His words in your mouth yeah. bring help and blessing. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. ha. So, kopraste ke shte meto basando shta dest, mane de shtompra beketa naladosto rabadost, nantete bakonta brakata bakata. Healing, health, wisdom, wealth, they're all a part of his realm. Praise God. And you can partake of his realm anytime you partake of his words. You partake of his realm by partaking of his words. Yeah. So good. So good. What is it, what is it that she's coming for? What is it that you need? Yeah, your lower back and your knee. Is it okay? okay. Yeah, absolutely. Lower back and knee. Now. Oh, oh, oh. Be healed, be free, be blessed, be whole, Woo. whole, 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 whole. <laughs> That's God's power, ma'am, flowing right in you. Whew. Glory to God. Tomorrow night, we'll lay hands on anyone who needs healing that comes for that purpose, but maybe you're here tonight and you say, I can't be here tomorrow night, but you came for the purpose of being ministered to. We want to take that time to minister to you. So if that's you, raise your hand just by a show of hands. Let me see how many that might be. Just raise your hand if that you. Come on up here. Those, yeah, come on up. Those of you who have your hands raised, come on up. Hallelujah. Do you know that people that we see come up forward in these services, do you know that you become a part of their miracle by your words? You join your words and you step into that miracle flow with them? And your words are an assist to their, to their faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Congregation, just reach your hands out toward these people. What is it that you need, love? I just need my body pain. Just pain in your body. Yeah, yeah. Father, we thank you for that. Uh, uh, there, there it goes in you. Father, we thank you. Every bit of it go. Every bit of it go. Whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name. What about you, love? Uh huh. The head, pelvis, and yeah, yeah. A lot of things, yeah. Father, we thank you. This is her receiving day. We receive it. We thank you. Wholeness in Jesus' name. Be whole. Be whole in Jesus' name. There that goes in you, love. In Jesus' name, whole in Jesus' name. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. 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 You know, 
the reason we lose many times the value of words is because they're so available. So common to us through every day that we stop recognizing what his words contain and hold for us. His words contain the ability to perform what the words say. Do you understand what I mean by that? My God shall supply all my needs. In those words is the ability to perform the supply. Words, God's words contain the ability to produce what they say. So when you say it, that's how you step into the flow of what those words contain. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Um, if you'd just hand me the mic, Brother Joel. Pastor Noel, come up here. We thank you, Father. Stand right in the middle so that that camera can catch you, Pastor Noel. You have to be in the middle of the aisle. Just stand, no, right, yeah, just right here, so, just so that, because that's the only way the camera can catch you. Well, you get a both lucky shit. Okay, Lord, I, I will say it. I've been hearing this, my spirit. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I, I believe I heard from you, Pastor, that the Lord is Jesus. And Jesus is the Word. And the utterance, see, what's, what we need is the, we receive the Word. And even Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. That what? Joy. That your joy. Yeah. That your joy may be full. In all the utterances that was given by Pastor, uh, Pastor Amy, uh, Joel, I mean freedom, all those things. You might not need healing. You might need freedom or whatever. Rejoice over the word. Rejoice on the utterance. See, that was uttered, you know, some healing was uttered. That was utterance given by the Holy Ghost. And when you rejoice with the utterance you heard, then that, that word will be affected. You're going to get into your spirit. You're going to receive that word by rejoicing. So tonight, amen. My <laughs> whatever you need right now. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's say the word. Rejoice. Ooh, you're believing for your children's salvation. Rejoice it tonight. Because you receive the word that, oh my God. That's what's missing. That's what the Holy Ghost said. If my people only rejoice with the word they heard, they will receive it. It's a guarantee. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Finances, your belief, some believing for finances that's really, really needed. Then rejoice over, over the word that you have a supply for it. Rejoice, <laughs> Father. <laughs> Somebody's dead, you kick it, do whatever, you slap in the face, they won't, 
they won't respond because they're dead. And you, and you, and me, our spirit are quickened. You need to respond. You're alive in God. When you dance, it's really your spirit. Your body is just acting, but your spirit is responding. Joy comes from your spirit. You're not dead. You're alive in God. Joy in the Holy Ghost.
I want you, I, w I want you to grab hands with the person next to you. Leave the aisles open. Grab hands with the person next to you. Leave the aisles open. Grab hands with the person next to you. Keep the aisles open. Pastor Ruby, come here. Pastor Ruby, come here. Cindy, come here. David, come here. Come down here. Come here. Miss Cindy, I want you to take that aisle. David, I want you to take that aisle. Pastor Ruby, you take this aisle. Y'all go. Y'all go. Yeah. That doesn't just happen so we can feel something. That happens so that it can perform a work. The anointing is to do a work. So as what you say, well, what work? What do you need it to do? Assign, assign that power to your need. Amen. Power's working in my home. Power's working in my body. Power's working in my finances. Hallelujah. Do you believe that his power is working? Yeah. That's something to rejoice about, isn't it? Hallelujah. I think Tony ought to do something. <laughs> Not on the organ, brother. Not on the organ, brother. Whatever. Whatever comes to you, brother. Unwire yourself. <laughs> yeah.
Let me tell you something about a service like this. You got to get around it to get in it. You got to get around it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grant, Grant, come down here, love. Come down here. Just put, well, you, you can take your microphone if you want. What you saw Tony do, go do. I don't know. I think that I'll need something. Grant.
Let's do something, David. Whatever. This is that. <laughs> 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 this is that. Spoken by the prophet John. This is that. Fell on the day of Pentecost.
going to speak his word. We're going to say what we know, say the truth and do it tonight. But we're also going to get drunk <laughs> on new wine. <laughs> Come on, we're going to receive from the new one. <laughs> oh, come on, somebody shout. Come on, somebody shout. Come on, somebody shout. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come up here, love. Yeah, yeah, come on up. Father, I thank you that you offer her total restoration. Things that were lost even years ago that you've let go and you've let slip, take claim of them again. He'll restore it. I don't know what that means. Uh, maybe you'll have to even look to him to help him, to have him to help you know what more he wants to restore that you've even let slip. So I thank you, Father. Thank you for, for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. With every hand lifted, repeat these words after me. And if you've never been born again, you need this life. You need this life. Or you've stepped out of fellowship with the Father. You can come back into right fellowship. How? When you speak words that agree with His Word, then the words of this life start, if I could say this, governing the rest of your life. Hallelujah. And I, I know that many times it's all Christians in here, but there might be somebody. And so we're just going to pray it all together. And if you're praying it for the first time or if you're praying it to come back into right fellowship, let your heart agree with these words. Say, Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, thank you for paying the price for my sin. I receive you. As my Savior, I receive you as my Lord. That means that I will live for you the rest of my life, all the days of my life. And because of your cleansing blood, now my, my past is cleansed away. You give me a brand new start. I am now a new creature in Christ. God is my Father. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Lord. And I'm a child of God right now. And I thank you for it. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you're here tonight and you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you say, well, Pastor Nancy, how do I know if I've been filled? Well, we only know by looking at the Word. The Word says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. And so if you're born again, that belongs to you. It's a gift that belongs to every one of God's children. What is it? A deeper dimension of God. Amen. Amen. You want, this, you want this deeper dimension of God, the person of the Holy Spirit filling you. Why? Because it's going to make everything in your life so different because now you have divine help flowing at full measure. Amen. If you say, Pastor Nancy, I'm born again, but I've never been filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking tongues, but I want to. Raise your hand. If that's you tonight, raise your hand. Is there anybody in here? Because we don't want to leave without... Come up here, love. Come on up here. Anybody else, come up and join her because you don't want to leave with less than what God has for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else want to join her? Come up here, love. Good evening. How are you? Good to see you, love. Anybody else that you want to join her tonight? This is the time to step up. Amen. Hallelujah. Congregation, reach your hands out toward this precious lady. When I lay hands on you, the anointing of God's going to come on you, and you're going to sense on the inside of you something springing up. Feel it, filled with the Holy Ghost. If you will just respond to that, and you, the way you respond to that, love, is that it will seem like your tongue will want to say something. It not, the words don't come to your mind. 
It doesn't come to your mind. It comes from your spirit right up. And you just open up your mouth and you speak that out. Don't wait for words to come up here. But you just open and, and God won't move your mouth for you. Okay? You just, you just say it. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for filling her. She's a child of yours, and you have, you have more for her. Receive the, whole, re, re, receive the Holy Ghost. Now, right where you're at, just speak it out. There you go, love. And let me say this to pastors and pastors that may be here present, pastors that may be watching. You have to teach people, just say something to people. The words won't come to your mind. This is where many people miss it. They're sitting there, standing there waiting. If you're going to minister, they're waiting for words to come to their mind. It doesn't. And, in, and unless you tell people that, it'll be hindrance to them just speaking out because they're waiting for words to come to the mind. It doesn't. It's from the from spirit to the tongue. From the spirit to the tongue. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isn't the Lord good? Yes. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Go ahead and help her up. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, can I tell you this? You, you just received the gift of the Holy Ghost. You, you see this ring right here? It was a gift from this couple right over here. They gave me this gift. You know what? I never have to call them and say, can I wear the gift you gave me? Can I put it on today? Because it's gifted to you anytime, all day long if you want. You can draw on that gift and yield and just speak in other tongues. You don't have to wait to be in a church service. You don't have to wait to be around other believers. You don't have to wait to feel something. You, anytime you want. All right? Amen. You're so welcome. God bless you. I'm so glad you were here tonight. Love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise and how has How has this week gone so fast? How has that happened? How about if we just call this Monday? We, we just have one more day. One more day. My goodness, you don't want to miss in the morning. It's going to be good. It's been good every morning, and you don't want to miss tomorrow night. Let's just lift up our hands and thank him tonight. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much for all that your plan holds for us in these services. We honor that plan. Thank you for what we've received in these services. We thank you for healing. We thank you for revelation of the word. We thank you for refreshing of your spirit. We thank you for fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Father, for answers that have come for the people. We purpose to be, we purpose, we purpose to be doers, not just hearers only, but to be doers of your word and we give you thanks and we give you praise just tell him out of your own out of your own mouth thank you so much father we thank you we thank you we thank you come here miss come here come here love come here this is what i just heard when i'm standing there all the money all the money comes so easy. It comes so easy for the plan. It comes so easy. Don't, don't cheat the plan. Don't cheat the plan. Everything that's in your heart, build it. Everything that's in your heart. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a scaled back, dumbed down version because you're trying to save money. It's not your job to save money. It's your job to fulfill the plan. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. How many times the devil will try to get you to scale back what's in your heart? 
because we're trying to save money. I'm not called to save money. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not talking about being wasteful. I'm not talking about dishonoring the giving of the people. But God wants you to, to follow what's in your heart. He doesn't want you to follow uh, things in the natural. Don't build what's in your head. Build what's in your heart. Amen. Because your head will tell you, oh, we can, we can get by with something less than that. Don't build what's in your head. Build what's in your heart. Do you know that goes for your home too? Goes for your business too? Amen. Follow what's in your heart. Don't follow what's in your head because your head will cheat you out of everything that's in your heart. It'll scale down. And the thing is, is I don't want to settle for something. And that every time I, for example, I remember when we were finishing up the office building after Ed went home to be with the Lord. And there was a particular element I wanted in the building. But I thought, you know what? It costs so much to do that. And I can get by with just a basic design of that element. And the anointing of God came on me and said, do what's in your heart. Do what's in your heart. And I said, yeah, I'll do that. And I realized this, that if I wouldn't have done what was in my heart, every time I would have seen that element in, my, in the building, it would have preached to me. You didn't obey you didn't obey. And I'm not going to pay to put something in my facility that's going to remind me of disobedience or not following my heart. Amen. Amen. So just, you want the things that are around you to testify to his goodness, not testify that you saved money. There again, I'm not talking about being wasteful. I'm saying follow your heart not your head. Amen. That means you should have the car you want. Amen. But, let me help some of you young people. How many times did I hear as a pastor, these 15 year olds, I'm going to get me a Lamborghini. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. What's that mean? Go through the process of faith. <laughs> You don't just say, I, I just want the corn. The full corn in the earth. No, you have to rejoice over the blade. Rejoice over the blade. Take the process. Amen. But the process won't cheat you. The process won't rob from you. So don't rob from the process. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you that all the right workers, all the right help for the Bulgers Church, all of it, all of it, every element, every ingredient of that plan, every single, light and easy, light and easy. Don't settle for, love, don't settle for anything that's not light and easy. If it comes and it tries to bring pressure, say, no, I'm not taking that flow. Light and easy flow, light and easy flow. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. Well, turn around to somebody before you're dismissed and say, there's more tomorrow and I'm coming to get mine.